Praise the Lord, everyone. Happy Sunday. Um, I'm hope, I hope y'all guys are having a good day. Um, I just kind of wanted to come on real quick and just share a word uh, uh, from God today. Um, if, if God is giving you a word, you have to know that it's going to come to pass. Um, you can't allow your circumstances, situation, people to get you off that word. Um, I remember when I first moved to Texas and I was wondering about, you know, marriage. Would I ever be married? Uh, you know, what was happening in my life and, and, you know, what God wanted for me. And I remember the word of the Lord. He just said one word, be patient. Okay, that's kind of like two words. But he just told me to be patient. And that word um, in that at that point in my life was enough to sustain me, even now. Um, it's a word that I carry that I have never forgotten to this day. And that was seven years ago. Well, six years ago when he said that to me. Um, but it was, it has been enough to sustain me because um, I know what his word says. Many times God will give you a word and your first thought is you'll believe it. You're excited about that word. But then life happens. Things come your way. Um, and to try to get you off that word or Satan will begin to try to deceive you and change your mind about what God has said to you. Perfect example. Um, I'm, I'm looking at Matthew 14 and 22. So it says, then Jesus commanded his disciples to get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he sent the crowds away. When he sent the crowds away, he went up into a mountain by himself to pray. Um, and when evening came, he was there alone. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was turbulent. So now it, God is up in the mountain and he's praying. He sent the disciples away. The boat is in the middle of the sea, but a storm has arisen on the sea. During the fourth watch, we're at Matthew 14 and 25. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out in fear. But immediately, now this is a miracle. You're, you're, you're on the boat, there's a storm going, and you see this man walking on water now it had to be foggy a real crazy storm because they didn't even know that it was jesus but they had enough sense to cry out um in, in fear because this man is walking on water in the middle of a storm that's significant in itself that we have a god that is able to uh you know have enough faith that he can walk on water when stuff is just going 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 haywire stuff is going crazy he is not bound by the circumstances he is able to supersede the circumstances there was a windstorm and he walking on water he's superseding what their eyes could see was this storm this situation when we're going through things in life we have to allow that word in us to supersede that situation that's going on that we are dealing with in life but that, that's not my point from going here so let's 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 get back to the word so Matthew 14, 27, but immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, be of good cheer. It is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, bid me to come to you on the water. And he said, Jesus saying, come. Now, Jesus, Peter it, knows that this is Jesus at this point and God gives him the word come sometimes God is giving you the word to come or to go whatever that word is that he's giving you he just needed you to take that word and act on that word so he said in, in Matthew 14 29 he said come and when Peter got out of the boat so now Peter is acting on the word that God has given him which was to come. He's getting out of the boat. He walked on the water to go to Jesus. But, but when he saw the strong wind, he was afraid and began to sink. See, now God has given us a word and we were acting on that word. 
we're following what he said we're 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 we're, we're going where he's told us to go we're doing what he's told us to do and then the enemy comes and he gets us in doubt he twists what god said god said come or go or god said whatever he told you to do write that book start that business whatever he told you to do and then what satan does is he tries to get you to see distortedly he tries to get you twist what god said he gets you to see that oh man hey yeah it's real windy out here Oh man, yeah, it's it's real. Yeah, that wave is coming, man. It's gonna hit you. Oh man, you there's no way you can walk on water, man. This is there's he twists this, he twists what the Lord has said. But we as believers cannot allow him to twist and distort what God said. When God said, Come, you come. Because God understands, He knows what He's dealing with. He is giving you the ability to do what most people can say that you cannot do. You have to understand that if God before you, what can be against you? If God spoken a word in your life, you can do it. You can do all things through Christ, which strengthens you. It is his strength. It is his ability on you to do what he called you to do. Understand this is a partnership. And in a partnership, one partner isn't doing everything. But you both together are working together to get the job accomplished. The job was for them to walk on the water. Jesus was already walking on the water. He had the faith. All he needed was Peter to get into a line with the word that he said, which was to come. And in the partnership, God would have stabilized him and gave him enough strength to walk on the water. But in a partnership, if you're not cooperating with, the, with your partner, you cannot accomplish what, what the goal is. If, God, if, if the goal is to walk on water and one partner is walking on water, but then you have to get in line with the other partner to get on that water, then you have to be willing to listen to what your partner is saying. Jesus is our partner. He is our partner. We are in a covenant relationship with him. We're in a covenant relationship with God. And whatever our partner says... We must obey and listen to what he says and follow. We cannot allow the enemy to come in and distort what our what our, our, our covenant partner has said. Let's go over to Genesis 3 real quick. Um, and this is, is, is talking about Adam and Eve and how uh, the, the, the fall when uh, the enemy came in and deceived the woman. So Genesis 3 and 1. Now the serpent was more septile than any beast of the field which the lord god had made and he said to the woman has god said to you has god said you shall not eat of any tree of the garden and the woman said to the serpent we may eat of the fruit from the trees of the garden but from the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden god has said you will not eat of it nor will you touch it or else you will die so now satan is coming to the woman he's asking her a question which satan does to all of us he comes to us and he tries to sow a seed into our consciousness understand satan has no power unless we give it to him if we give place to the enemy he will have power in our lives and what he does is he doesn't try to just sow us uh truth he sows us something contrary to the word of god to get us to think on it sometimes he'll say something and we may not act on it that right then but if he can get it in our thought life where we're constantly thinking on it we're constantly thinking on it then more than likely we're gonna do what we're thinking on the bible says so as a man thinketh in his heart so is he the heart he's not talking about the heart here He's talking about the heart of your mind. If you're thinking things in your mind that is contrary to the word of God, so are you. You are going to do what you think. If it's constantly on your mind, if you're constantly thinking I'm not worthy or I'm not beautiful or I can't, can't do what God called me to do. If it's opposite the word of God, it is the enemy sowing a thought and you cannot take that thought. But we let, let's continue and see what Eve did. So Genesis 3 and 4. Then the serpent said to the woman, you surely will not die. God said she would die and the serpent comes to twist and distort what God had said. And sow a thought into that woman's life. For God knows that on the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God. 
knowing good and evil. Well, he's contradicting what God said because God said in the in the beginning, uh, let us create a man in our image and after our likeness. So we are of the God kind, lowercase g. We are of God. We have his DNA. We have his moral characteristic. We have his nature. So she was already of the God kind. And uh, Genesis 3, 5. For God knows that the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasing to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. So, I, I mean, we the Bible really doesn't say how long she sat and looked at it. But sometimes uh, the enemy will sow a thought into our lives and we would just think on it. I think when her looking at the tree was her thinking on it, her thinking about this tree, how good it was for food, how beautiful, how pleasing it was. Sometimes God will speak a word into our life and the enemy will try to sow something opposite of that word. Um, I, I, when I talk about being patient, when God sold the word of patience, but then what the enemy will, will, will do is he'll try to sow thoughts that, oh, you can't do that. Oh, man, you never going to get married. Oh, man, you never. He tries to sow doubt into my into my mind. And if I think on that word, oh, man, I'm never going to get married. Oh, man, I'm never going. I'm never going going to be what God. I, I can never do YouTube videos. I can never write blogs. I can never uh, have my uh, own ministry. I can never, because I'm a woman, I can't do, if I think and ponder on those things, then I'm allowing the enemy to deceive me and to break my covenant partnership with God. God told me that you will do a YouTube channel. That you do, that you'll have a big ministry, that you'll start schools, that you'll have. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I cannot do this, but because God said it, it is so. His word is final. We have to be single minded, oneness with God, and know that whatever He said about us is going to be. Whatever He told us we can do, we're going to do. Because it's not in our ability, but it's. it's it is in his it is in his ability it is his ability in us to cause us to do the things he said we gonna do so how peter how god spoke to him and said come well he came we cannot lose heart when we see some stuff taking long we cannot be dis deceived and allow thoughts to get into our mind to contradict the word of god and when it does we have to go to god and we have to submit those thoughts unto him we have to submit our thoughts unto him. If anything that exalted itself above the knowledge of God, we have to cast it down. And to cast it down is to transform our mind, to kick it out. When Jesus was in the garden with the serpent, with, with the devil, and the devil began to speak to him um, about uh, when he said, if, if, if you be the son of God, turn these rocks into bread, turn these stones into bread. Although God was, the, Jesus was the son of God and he could have done it. You don't get to tempt me. You don't get to, you can't tempt the Lord thy God. That's what Jesus said. He spoke the word to Satan. We must speak the word against whatever thought that is contrary to the word of God. If, if Satan is speaking to us and Satan just don't speak to our thoughts, he will influence people to come and try to speak words into our lives. And we as believers must combat any word that is opposite the word of God. So if he says uh, something like, um, you aren't beautiful, you can speak to that and say, well, wonderfully and fearfully I'm made. If he says, you know, you're not of the God kind, you can say, I am the workmanship of God created in Christ Jesus for good works. I remember one time I was in prayer, you know, I, I, I had prayed to God and I said, Lord, you know, forgive me for being evil. And he said, don't say you're evil. You're not evil. You're good. Say you're good. And he literally made me say out loud, you're good. You're good. So understand that if God has said it, it is so, it is final. We have to get our mind in line with the word of God. And it takes time. We have to renew our mind with the word of God. And when the enemy tries to sow a seed, we got to cast it down. And we cast it down with the word. We go before God. We can't even think on 
anything opposite God because if we do it's sown into our heart and out of it out of it flows you have to guard your heart because out of it flows the issues of life the thoughts of life the thoughts that try to contradict the word of God we cannot allow it to be sown in our heart if God has told you to do something do it if God has told you to build something build it he will give you everything you need. Understand, don't think that God is going to, uh, my uncle said it best, he's, he's not going to uh, pour out a million dollars out of the sky. But he'll give you a million dollar ideal if you can hold on in your partnership and your union with him in your covenant relationship to believe that whatever God said is so. If you get your thinking in line with him and allow him to Wash your thinking to strengthen you to bring that promise, that word that he says to pass. God's word is absolute. It changes not. So if God is telling you to walk on water, eat, don't look at your, your ability and who you think that you are. You don't know who God has created you to be. That is to be seen. But God has already seen that you will be all that he said you'll be. He see you as the finished work. So if he called you, he knew that you, 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 you got some things, you got some stuff. He understands that. He understands that you may miss it, that you may mess up, that you may drop the ball, but he called you. He called you for a purpose. And all you have to do is believe and be single-minded. Do not be double-minded because if you're double-minded, that means you're unstable in all your ways. You're wavering and you cannot waver with God, but you must believe the just walk by faith and not by sight. You have to believe. You have to believe God is who he says he is and whatever he said about you is true. Because without faith, it is impossible to believe him. Peter believed him enough to get out of the boat and began to walk on water. But then when the moist, when the boisterous waves, he saw something different. You cannot allow what you see to change what God said. Your experiences cannot change what God said. Do not put God in a, a box. God, if he wanted to pay taxes, he when the disciples came to Jesus and I'll end with this, um, they said, you know, we, we got to pay taxes. And he said, well, render to Caesar what is Caesar's. Go to the fish and pull the money out. He used a fish to get them what, they're needed, what they needed. You cannot put God in a box. He will use great things to get you what you need, to get you to the point of which he called you, the things he called you to do. So don't think something is so small and don't just think how God did it this time that he'll do it the same way. God will use a different method or different, different situation to get you what you need. You just have to be in covenant with him and trust him. We are partners. We are joint heirs with Christ Jesus. We are partners with God. And in our partnership, we must be single-minded. We cannot be, we, and single-minded, I mean being one with God. Think of a marriage. When you get married to someone, you become one. It's not my view and your view. It's our view. We're oneness. We're single in mind. With God, it is the same way. It's not God's view and then my view. It's God's view and I'm, I'm, I'm in line with God and I'm listening to his view. Whatever he says, I'm in line with him. We own one accord. We're on one accord in our thinking. If God said wonderfully and fearfully, he made me, guess what? Wonderfully and fearfully, he made me. And somebody outside of this covenant relationship with God can't come in and tell me anything different. Because God, if God be for me, who can be against me? I will not listen to anything anybody has to say concerning what God has said about me. I will trust God. And we must trust God. All right. So I think that's good. Uh, I hope you guys have a great Sunday. Yeah, I'm rocking my Lakers. I, I know we out of the playoffs. Oh, well, I'm, I'm a, 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 a day one fan. Uh, but I love you guys. I hope you guys have a blessed Sunday. Um, and, and just know that if he said it, it's going to come to pass. Time cannot bound God. He is an eternal God. 
And if he spoke anything to you, you need to get in the line with his word. You need to find out what the word says about it. You need to speak the word to the situation. When the enemy tries to come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. You have to allow God's word to be an absolute truth in your life. You cannot waver. You cannot be double-minded. You cannot be moved by what you see and what you hear. Allow God to, God's word to feed your thoughts. Sometimes you may have to cut the TV off. Sometimes you may have to cut the radio off and just spend time in the presence of the Lord to make sure that you're on one you're on one accord with God and what he said. I love you. Happy Sunday. Have a great day. God bless you.